Hello, so today I'm doing a thumbnail tutorial. I'll put my steps on the screen and keep in mind this is just how I make thumbnails and yeah, I'll also put the programs I used on the screen and possible alternatives. So first I go on to Badline, I log on to Hypixel and then I make sure that Replay Mod is turned on by looking at my Badline settings and just searching for Replay Mod. Then I go into a game by clicking whichever map I want my replay shot on. I click Escape and at the bottom there should be a button that says Start Recording. I click that. I wait a second and then I turn it off and leave Hypixel. Then I go to my options, video settings, and shaders, and I like to turn on shaders. It just makes it look a little bit better. Then I go to my replay viewer. I click my most recent replay recording and then I move around the map until I find a decent angle. Once I feel like I found an okay angle, I turn my FOV to 30. I press F1 and I take a screenshot. If you don't know how to take a screenshot, you can find the button for it by going to options then controls and scrolling down to this take screenshot if you don't know how to get to your screenshot you go into your search bar at the bottom go percent app data percent go to minecraft screenshots and then the screenshot at the bottom should be the most recent screenshot that you took making the render is definitely more difficult i'm not good at explaining things and if i tried to explain how cinema 4d works i would fail so I'm not doing that. I left a tutorial in the description which should hopefully explain things better on how to work Cinema 4D and there also has the link to the Lightroom and the rig that I use. The Lightroom is the Lightroom by Atmo Artworks and the rig is the RMK V7 rig and also you need to have your skin in order to make a render of it and to get it you can search for name mc click on the first link search the ign of the skin that you want at the search bar click on the profile click on the skin that you want and then click download i'm gonna take this time to briefly look over my settings you can copy them down if you want but i also just moved around the eyes and mouth a bit too also these settings are specific to the rig I was using. Not all Cinema 4D rigs look the same. I then move the arms and the head around for my render. I wanted to get the effect that my render was holding a comment, so that's what I was trying to do here. And then after I render it, first I have to choose my file location, so I click edit render settings and then choose where I want my render to end up. And then I click the render button. Afterwards, I edit my render in photos by adjusting adjusting the rotation a bit because it's a little tilted the wrong way and I also adjust the lightness of it because I feel like it's a little dim from the lighting but you could also do that in Photoshop pretty easily. I just did it in photos because I forgot that I started using Photoshop so. So next I got a comment from my Q&A. Just as a little extra item, I cropped it and just got it ready to be put into Photoshop. So then after that, I put everything together. I opened Photoshop and then I opened up the files that I needed. So my background, my render, and then the extra item, which is my comment. And then I used the tool at the top left to drag everything onto my background tab. And then I resized everything accordingly so that it kind of looked okay. I made sure that I was selected on the right layers when I was adjusting each thing and then I zoomed out a bit too because my render was kind of huge so I kind of made it smaller and moved it around and stuff. After I liked where my render was, I moved around my comment as well. I made it larger and I tilted it a bit because the hands of my render are tilted a bit. And then I made sure that my comment layer was on top of my render layer because I do want that effect that I am holding the comment. So next I made the background, so I clicked on my background layer, I went to filter at the top, and then I added a Gaussian blur, and I adjusted the amount of blur based on how much I wanted. Then I went to image, adjustments, black and white, and then I just click OK so everything is desaturated. Then I go back to adjustments, hue and saturation, and I colorize it so that it's all centered around one color. And then 
I adjust it to be the color that I desire, which is a very, very light blue that's very white-ish. And then after that, I have my background. So after that, I make my border. I first use the rectangular select tool, which is second from the top tool, and I create a smaller rectangle within the background layer. And then I make sure I'm clicked on the background layer on the right, and then I press Ctrl J to create a new layer with that smaller rectangle. After that, I adjust the luminance of the background to give it a 2D layer effect. And then once I have that, I click back on the smaller rectangle layer. I right click on it, click on blending options, which should be at the top. And then, so I add a outer glow. I change the color from yellow to white. I increase the size a bit and it just gives it that nice little glow effect. And then I also add a inner shadow. I get rid of the distance. I add some size to it until I feel like it looks okay. And that just gives you a little 3D border effect. Next, I kind of glamorize the render and extra items. I click on my comment layer. I click blending options again. And then I add a stroke and I make it white. In this case, it was kind of useless because the comment's already white, but for texture pack videos, I usually add a stroke to the pack icon. Then I add a drop shadow and again, get rid of the distance and increase the size a bit until it looks kind of like a warm shadow. And then I add effects to my render by clicking on blending options again. For this, I added an outer glow and I made the color white and increased size a bit to have a nice little glowy effect. And that's all I did for the render. After that, I worked on the text. So I clicked the text box tool, which looks like a T on the left. And then I made a text box wherever. I chose the font, I typed stuff out, and I chose the size until it looked okay. You can always move stuff around by clicking on the tool at the top and then just dragging whatever the text is wherever you want. A good thing to this is finding a good font. So you can go to defont.com and download fonts there. The fonts I usually use are Lemon Milk and Better Together. But um, once the text is kind of where I want it, and once I have the amount of text layers that I want, I go ahead and put some blending options onto it. I add a gradient overlay to my likings and adjust with the colors and the opacity of it. And then I also add a drop shadow, get rid of distance, increase size, and I add an inner glow because I feel like it just makes it look a little nicer. Also, if you want to adjust the text size, font, and color, those are all at the top when you click on the text layer originally. I more or less forgot to mention that. And then once you do that with all your text layers, it should look pretty nice. Afterwards, I add overlays or an overlay. So I already have an overlay of snow downloaded, but if you do add overlays, make sure the background is transparent. So I just open it up and it puts it on a different project. So I have to drag it onto the background or my thumbnail again. I don't want it to be over my render and text. So I drag that layer under and then I mess with the opacity and the size of it until I feel like it looks okay. And then there I have my thumbnail. To render it, you can just click file and then export and then export it with JPEG or PNG and choose your file location. For some reason, it wasn't working for me, so I just took the snipping tool and took a screenshot. It has basically the same effect and only a little bit of quality is lost. And then lastly, I just add little touches. So I put my thumbnail into paint side and then I like to add a little blush and sometimes make the face a bit brighter and just things to make it look a little cuter. And then I'm done with my thumbnail. I press Control S to save it. And then I just have my thumbnail. When you're making a thumbnail, make sure you use the dimensions 1920 by 1080 at least or just that ratio because that's the ratio you need. But yeah, that's all. I apologize for being off a lot tutorials, but this is just kind of like a speed thumbnail thingy. Yeah, I hope you got something from this. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.